Now you don't want me to talk no more. You just told me to talk. Now you don't want me to talk now. You see what I'm saying? You you cut you embarrassed me. I caught you a B because you didn't want to talk to me. I thought I was gonna tell the truth. You dissed me, so I dissed you back. You called me a Whew. Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Button 91. Listen. It's a very painful situation when a woman wants to call a man the B word. Um, but I want to ask this question. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like maybe, you know, your reaction, you felt it was justified, but people are telling you that your reaction was overboard. People are telling you your reaction was too much. People are telling you, telling you your reaction was violent. People are telling you, you know what, your anger is too much. They say you've got anger problems, but maybe you don't feel that particular way. Maybe you felt like you're justified in what you said. Maybe you feel like... They deserved what they got, right? Um, this is one of those videos where I want to talk about suppressed anger. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you finally erupt and a volcano goes and everybody then complains that you finally erupted and blew up. Well, there's two truths here. Your truth is absolutely true, right? You got to a certain point and you're fed up. But the other truth is also that you may have overreacted to the situation. And I want to be able to break down why that is the case. See, anger in itself is not an issue. It's an emotion, right, that has neither good nor bad attached to it, except when an action is labeled with it. And in society, we label certain actions as being um, heinous, bad, good, um, you know, whether it's acceptable, deemed by each society's standard. Now, what Millie did in this situation, I'm sure many women have gone through and many men have gone through, right? They get to a point where they start insulting somebody and really just going for the lowest, uh, you know, belt, try and antagonize the other party. Because that's what essentially she was doing. Once she got to that point where she started calling him a B word, she wanted him to erupt. She wanted to say, see, that's what I'm talking about. Right? She wanted to be able to call him out for it, but unfortunately he just stayed calm and the more calm he stayed, the more angry she got because she wasn't getting what she actually wanted, which was the reaction. But anger in itself, again, is not an issue. It's the action that's labeled with it. And alongside that, anger, it, it, when we use anger, it is an indication that some boundaries have been violated. And if you listen to that clip very carefully, she actually tells you what, what her violation was. Her violation was, you embarrassed me. You embarrassed me by asking everyone else to speak, but not me. And actually, if we, go, if we go a little bit earlier on in the clip, you'll hear who exactly she actually mentioned. She actually mentioned two men, Greg, and she mentioned Aaron, I believe that it was, right? That Chris was saying. And so that actually gives us a bit more of an indication as to what actually happened. Because two men, uh, two men that she mentioned, him asking them what, what their thoughts were, right, whether he had done what he had done and not considering her, actually is probably where the infliction for her anger is actually coming from. She felt unseen, unheard and felt like she wasn't being considered. But that's not about Chris. Usually that anger that flares up like that is not about the immediate action. It's that plus what's ever happened to us in our childhood. And we know with Millie already, she's gone through sexual violence. So there is a bigger scope of questioning that has happened here. So we're gonna break it a little bit more, we're gonna break it all the way down here. The key word we're gonna speak about today is silent anger. Silent anger. It's one of my key phrases I'm using this particular season. I want you to understand silent anger. What it, generally, what it means is suppressed emotion, suppressed anger. And when suppressed, when anger is suppressed, it's pushed down, it's depressed, it's compressed, it's repressed. What tends to happen is that, what tends to happen is that is a coil that is tightly wound and only needs space before, only needs space and time and stress enough stress for it to spring and it erupts like volcano in this particular situation where she called him the b word so we're going to go a little bit deeper i really want to be able to help as many people possible if you're somebody who can identify with millie or you've been on the end of someone like millie then this is going to be the video for you i'm going to try and explain and break it all the way down for you as well please make sure you do a massive favor like it share subscribe click on the bell button for notification of the uploads we appreciate you as well and let's get deeper All right, let's go a little bit deeper because I want to be able to, uh, you know, uh, explain a little bit more. Let's watch a little bit more of the clip and then we'll, d we'll dive a little bit deeper into her, her words. That's how I feel. I'm talking to her very calmly as soon as she opens her mouth. It's like up here already. To me, you're raising your voice. I wasn't raising my voice. Okay, so 
the beginning part of the clip is what I was paying attention to. She said, obviously, you know, that's why she called him a B. She called him a B because she felt embarrassed. She felt like, you know what, he was inadvertently calling her a B by not considering her. So whenever we look at somebody's frustration and anger as to why it's coming, anger again is as a result of a violation of your boundaries. And what you're saying is my anger is making me confront something because I want you to come to the front. Let me say it again for you. Your anger is confronting something because it's saying come to the front. Let's deal with this now. That's what your anger does. It gives you energy to confront something. So come to the front because we're going to deal with this right now. Right. And so when you suppress your anger, it, 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 oftentimes people suppress their anger because they have been told that their emotions are not valuable. Their emotions are not wanted here. Um, they are neglected in their emotional states. And oftentimes children have to survive. OK, those early neglectful years, those years where they where they're told their boundaries don't matter. And remember, she has been violated sexually where she's been told that, obviously, you know, your, your boundaries don't matter. You've been told that, you know what, you can't say no. Uh, you've been told in situations that, you know, your opinion doesn't doesn't hold weight here. Right. Some might call it misogyny or, mis you know, what I mean, right. So all of that infused then becomes part of our anger. Our anger is to say, hey, I don't like this. And it's, it brings us to a place of confrontation. So Millie's now being combative and confrontational in this situation. And she's confronting Chris. But Chris isn't responding in a way that's going to cause a war to happen. Where she can really probably get her words out, right? And unload her anger on him appropriately. But So what ends up happening is it now looks like you're bullying Chris. And you're trying to put a verbal tirade on him because he's not responding. Now let's play a little bit more. And then we'll do a video. You talk to Cynthia like that, okay? She's a woman that may be a little quiet. You can do that to her, but you can't do that to me if you ask me something. All right. I'm not going to let no one just say you can speak now, you can't. All right. Now, let's pause it here, right? Because in reality, the names that she mentioned once more again were the men. It was Aaron and, Chris, Aaron and, Aaron and uh, uh, Greg. Because remember, he doesn't argue with women. He said that multiple times he does not argue with women and again here he didn't argue with her now she's getting annoyed because what he's doing by saying he's not arguing with women is he's saying i don't see you as an equal so i'm not going to argue with you the problem is what interpretation is she putting on him saying i'm not going to argue with women because in a sense what he's actually saying is i don't see you as an equal or it's not right i should say to argue with a woman as a man now, how is she interpreting that? Well, I think with the frustration and anger, we can kind of maybe close the gap a little bit. She feels a little bit unseen and unheard and feels like, again, you are going to consider me a co-equal. Now, if we kind of bring in a few more information, we know later on we, she you know, releases the fact that she's been sexually violated, has gone through some sexual violence, right? And when you add that to the situation, you'll realize that that was a man that did that, right? So what you'll see is there's an anger towards or frustration or a hurt or a pain towards a violation that's happened in her life and sometimes what we do is project how we're feeling onto somebody else so that man that's in front of her right now which is Chris he's now playing the role of the man potentially that violated her that she could not say no to who she felt stupid because remember she explains it says I feel dumb but she doesn't use the words um she said I know I shouldn't have been there I shouldn't have gone there I shouldn't have done this I shouldn't have. so what she's trying to do is course correct and rewrite history and when we have suppressed feelings and emotions that we have down deep that deep down they are waiting the right scenario, the, the perfect storm. And the perfect storm is right here. Chris, who is a womanizer, seemingly, um, who is um, not taking Sandia into consideration, who's not treating her right, who Millie identifies with because herself probably felt like Sandia is where she had no voice and couldn't speak up for herself because in the situation where she was violated, she couldn't do that there. So this time around, she's going to make sure that she's going to speak up and she's going to speak up for other people. A lot of us, especially myself, are become justice warriors because we felt like we were also silenced at a point in time. So we take it personally. All right. The tip, the TIP, we take it personally when we see other people who are like us, who have been like us or we see ourselves in. And when we see them being taken advantage of, our reaction becomes a bit more fiercer because actually we're putting ourselves into them. But for her to go above and beyond to go to where, where she's going to say the B word. So she's not just defending her. You know, Diamond defended Sandia. But with, 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 with uh, uh, um, Millie, she went a step above and started calling him the B word, right? So instead of just defending, she went on the attack, right? 
she went on the attack. Now that's more to do with just not just what has happened to her, it's also her nature, right? Because she's probably a bit more of a stronger person, likes to be, I don't want to say combative, she's probably somebody who can, uh, who's quite strong minded, wants to, you know, put her best foot forward. She's not somebody who is a bit more apprehensive, right? She's ordinarily probably, probably a very confident person, right? Maybe it's able to use her language very well. So then when you combine those gifts and those skills and the, na the nature of the individual plus then the nurturing of situations and environments, then you get this really volatile reaction, right? Okay, a rewriting of history, a suppression of your emotions where today you're saying, today I will not suppress, you will get it, right? I'll let you know. But she's not aware right now that she's not seated in the present of her emotions. She's seated in the past of her emotions, right? Her past emotions have taken her back to past historic events that are causing her to react wildly now. We saw that also with Greg, her actual, her actual partner who she's supposedly meant to be intimate with. We saw how she could not hold space for him. But here with Chris, there seems to be some level of dissociation or I should say, yeah, dissociation with herself and her emotions. She's, she's in the past. She's not in the present because this current situation doesn't require a B word. Okay. All right. Let's put a bit more. Right, what's a good talk? I thought she would never be, so I just thought she would be now. But listen, no, because you're deflecting. I can, you yes, no, I'm not deflecting. Chris, I can you're trying to, to leave level. the truth again. I have a problem. Now she's trying to tell him off because she believes she's trying to impose herself on him. She's trying to have a power in a situation where she didn't have power before. Now this conversation didn't need to go this left. It could have been a conversation, but she wanted to belittle him and she wanted to sun him and she wanted to let him know that it's not going to be her that you're going to play with. But he wasn't playing with her, but she put a meaning on his action without asking him what he meant by it. Right? So now we've got a situation where she's going at him. Rather than asking him, so what did you mean? What I interpreted your behavior of you not considering me as you actually making make, make me feel like I'm unheard, unseen. I felt a bit embarrassed. I felt shamed. And I felt like I wasn't a co-equal. She could have explained that, right? But she didn't do that. Instead, she went on the attack because she went with her judgment. Because you see what happens here, right? Anger will link up with your judgment. Whatever judgment you make. If you, if you say, this is, is what it is, right? If you say um, that... Uh, that you, you've made, if you make a judgment on something, an issue, it becomes black and white and there's no gray and only your truth exists. That's what usually prompts the anger to now make a decision that usually is looking seemingly overboard. We've made a judgment, right? Okay. So it's unfortunate she's in that space. Um, and we can address this in part two, but I wanted to share this and say, look, you know, um, that, uh, you notice that she starts playing this tough card, like, you can't do this to me, I'm not the one, um, you know, she called him another B word as well, she insulted him, all right, and she was letting him know that, basically, that, you know, she, she, she's not the one or the two, don't try her. Yo, such a stupid You're afraid of a girl like me, you can never have a woman like me, sweetheart. Keep on going to weak bitches, but when you sit with a woman like me... Again. Now, she said, the final one, I want to end it on here. She said, listen, keep going to those weak B words. Now, see when your anger, when your anger gets to a point where you now don't even realize what you're saying, because actually, inadvertently, she actually calls Sandia a weak B. But inadvertently by saying, I don't, I'm not one of these weak Bs. Because remember, the reason why you're fighting him is because you feel like Sandia is this quiet girl. I'm not Sandia. I'm not her. I'm a different type of girl, right? You can't do me like you do them, right? And in reality, you're not fighting him. Or I can say you are fighting him, but you're fighting your past predecessors who you felt have offended you, right? So see what happens because anger in this space where we don't control it and we don't, we don't regulate it begins to distort us. You see, suppressed anger begins to distort how we see life because you see, anger, is, as, a, anger as an emotion is actually there to protect you. It's a protective piece. It's saying to you, violation of boundaries, okay, come to the front, let's confront. You know what I'm saying to you? It's supposed to protect you, but when you suppress your anger due to what you've been violated with on boundaries, what tends to happen is it, it deregulates the way you perceive the world, right? Because you suppressed it, so now it's working in the subconscious of the mind, and it begins to, and it begins to askew the perception of how you see things. That's why the reactions are wild. That's why the B-word keeps coming up. That's why she has to insult him so much, because the subconscious is now playing a role, right? And to the point where she's going to be on autopilot. You probably ask her, do you know what you're saying? I don't even remember. We, well, we saw how she spoke to Greg later on. She couldn't even really tell you what she actually really said. Because when anger gets to that place where it becomes an autopilot, where you now leave the consciousness and your subconsciousness now takes over, we get this type of behavior. 
repressed anger showing itself up and it's rearing its ugly head. Right? So let me just say this now. Look, if you're if you're suffering through something like this, listen, shout me. This is what kind of coaching we're trying to do. We're trying to help people as much as possible identify some of these issues and help course correct. Um, my calendar's booked um in pretty much so halfway through June, and I appreciate that. I want you guys to sign on. It's not a, we're not charging a set fee, it is whatever you feel the price of the session is worth. Um, and we want to be able to help you, and trust me, we will do so um as well. So make sure you guys have joined uh onto uh, our coaching. Um, uh, make sure you guys are liking and sharing and subscribing to this channel because we want to be able to make sure that you know we produce some great content as well for you guys. I appreciate you guys. Stay locked to the